All right, Shalom. This is Har One by Yasha'ala of the GMS Lions in Kent. I want to say Kahalayim, Layahawa, Bahashim, Yahavashai, Bahashim, Havakakwadash, Mahamath. Double honors to the elder apostles of GMS. And Shalom to you, Akim, and Nakwatim, and children that believe in sincerity and in truth around the four corners of the earth. All right. Um, I want to go into this topic dealing with the Antichrist, you know, to, uh, to edify. Um, which the word edify means to build build up um, a brother out there named uh, B. Carter, man. I believe he's an Israelite, but this is a question um, that he mentioned, and I wanted to go into it. This is uh, 1 John uh, chapter 2, verse 18. It says, Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. All right. So um, at this time, at, you know, during the times of Rome, um, when the prophet John was speaking, you know, um, you know, what he was speaking of was the false prophets, the false brethren amongst the Israelites. And also, um, you know, well, really the, the false brethren that were amongst the Israelites that were following the system of Esau, which is the so-called white man, which Esau is the manifestation of the spiritual demon, Satan, upon earth. All right, so anything following their system or their lies or any lie in general that's opposite of the Most High, you know, really of any nation, any lie, um, let me get scripture. All right, this is First John 2 and 21. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it and that no lie is of the truth. So no lie in general, you know, any lie that's spoken is anti-truth, anti-anointed. You see that? So any vessel that considers himself bearing any type of truth, you know, if they're speaking lies, they become a vessel of, a, of that lie, you know, uh, um, you know what I mean? So they become anti-anointed, anti-Christ. They become against, against uh, Shah, against the anointed. All right. All right. So um, as I was reading, this, this is First John two and eighteen, because I think, if I'm not mistaken, this was John the uh, Revelator that wrote this. Now, it says, uh, "Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard, the Antichrist shall come." All right, and that word Antichrist, let's see what it means. All right, so this is uh, 1 John 2 and 18 where it says Antichrist. I'm going to click on it. So what you need to find this out, you need your Strong's Concordance and the lexicon. All right, the Strong's Concordance to give you the definition and the lexicon to uh, translate the word and give you the translation. Now, right here, you go into the Greek. And it'll be Strong's G500 and the lexicon in the Greek. And it says um, an opponent of the Messiah. So an opponent an opponent of the anointed one. You see that? So what so is it one person? No. You know, it's everybody that's against uh um the Messiah. Literally. Everybody that's against the the anointed one which and that anointed one is the uh, Yahweh Shah, is the Messiah. You see that? Amashayak, Yahweh Shah. You know? That's how you say it in the Hebrew. It wouldn't say Christ. All these, all these churches saying Christ, Christos, and all that. That's that's Greek deities, man, Greek idols. The word that's supposed to be there is Messiah. And how do you say that in the Hebrew? Anoint, it, it means anointed. Matter of fact, all right, right here in Daniel 9 and 26, um, speaking about the Messiah being cut off, you know, uh, you know when he was sent, and he died around, uh, you know, sometimes around 30, 34, 38 BC, uh, 38 AD, Salaki, you know, 38 AD. That's around the time he died. All right, he came on the scene around 34, uh, around 4 AD. All right, Yahweh Shah, and he was a black man from the tribe of Judah. All right, with dark skin, spoken of in Revelations 1 and 13. And in the book of Hebrews, it tells you he was from the tribe of Judah. All right. But he was born of uh, of his father Joseph, 
He was the seed of Joseph, which was the seed of King David through Jesse. All right. Uh, uh, the seed of Jesse through David, you know, and so on and so on. All right. That's what Yahweh is, a so called black man. Now, that's the Messiah. He's the anointed one that was cut off around that time. All right. And that's what this speaks of in uh, Daniel 9 20, 26, 24. And also in 26. So if you click on Messiah, it says, um, right here, G, well, actually, H, H4, H4, damn, H4,089, 4899, that's a weird looking number, man. All right, then you click on the lexicon, go to the Hebrew, you can make the screen a little bigger. And right there in the Hebrew, that's Yiddish. That's not the true Paleo Hebrew. That's not Paleo Hebrew. That's not Biblical Hebrew. They call it Phoenician script. That's what we speak. But it's not supposed to be called Phoenician Hebrew. It's called, just supposed to be called Hebrew or ancient Hebrew, Paleo Hebrew. All right, meaning ancient. Now it says, anoint Mashayak. Mashayak, right? So what does that mean? Anointed. So that's how you say Messiah. The word Messiah, if you look at the word Christ, it means Messiah. we just seen that, right? If you look at the word anointed it would, uh, or, or Messiah, either one, you know? Because it said anti-Christ means anti-Messiah, an adversary of the Messiah, against the Messiah. So let's look, we looked up Messiah, and it says anointed. You see that? So how would you say anointed in the Hebrew? Mashayak. So they're anti, uh, the anointed one, Yahweh, Messiah. All right. It says anointed, a consecrated person, the Messiah, the King of Israel. You see that? So, so I want to click back on that word um, antichrist before we go on. Now it says what? Where was it at? Antichrist, right here, verse 18. That's G500, Greek, 500 strong. And it says, an opponent of the Messiah. So the opponent, the uh, opposition of the anointed one, of the anointing, of the oil, of the truth, of the word. You see that? So it says, what? The adversary of the Messiah. Adversary. So what does the word adversary mean? Satan. So who's um, considered the, the word Satan? If you look at the word Satan, it means adversary. All right. This is uh, 1 Chronicles 21 and 1 where it says Satan stood up against Israel all right, and provoked David to number Israel. That happened, you know, because the scripture says you're never supposed to number Israel. So the devil is the spiritual demon that, that uh, provokes uh, you to sin. You know, all right. But the Most High controls the devil. Look at Job. If you read, you want to learn about that. Read Job. All right. The devil is a workhorse or a dog for Yahweh. Yahweh and Yahweh Shah. They do the will and, and test the strength of the of the creation of Yahweh, which is the children of Israel. All right. So they set in opposition as an adversary. So I'll click on the word Satan. Now we're gonna see who Satan is today, and that will help you understand who is Antichrist. It's not just one person, but many people. Everybody that's against the truth, period. Starting from the so-called white man on down to the even Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, two-thirds of them that will perish in the coming destruction because they want to be and follow after their father, the devil, the so-called white man. So this is Satan, and it says uh, Strong's H7854. All right, and it says what? An opponent. See, opposition, Satan, the arch, arch enemy of good. So who is the arch enemy of good? The so-called white man, and, and their biblical name is Esau. They're not white. Like you look at a white piece of paper. Yeah, that, that deals with white supremacy that was set up with the Catholic Church, all right, in Rome and Greece and over here in America. So it says an opponent, all right, uh, Shatan, it says the 
the arch enemy, adversary, one who withstands in general, personal or national, see, personal or national, meaning nationwide, all right, or spiritual superhuman uh, adversary, which is the spiritual demon, see. So now with that being said, let's proceed with the lesson. This is First John, you know, now we got a, a kind of a, a foundational uh, understanding of the certain terminologies I'll be using. This is First John 2 and 18. It says, uh, Little children, it is the last time. What, what last time? Since Yahweh Shah was on the scene, we've, we've entered the last days. All right. Since Yahweh Shah was on the scene, we've entered the last days. And, the, and the, uh, you know, but there had still had to come a complete falling away of the children of Israel first after that to complete our, um, our judgment. All right, to complete our, uh, our our being cut off from being a nation. You know, from the time of, we went into bondage in Assyria, all right, under the Assyrians, and all the we, all way until we went to bondage under the Babylonians. You know, the Assyrians came and took us in 701 B.C., in 722 B.C., and then 701 B.C., they took Lachish, and then 530, uh, 539 or 586 BC, the Babylonians took us. All right, then the Persians took us. Then the Greek Greco Roman took, Empire took us. All right, the Persians took us um, into, uh, sent, well, sent us back into Israel and Jerusalem around uh, 538 BC. You know, when he started call, calling us back to the land to build that temple. To rebuild the second temple. And the third temple is being built right now, but it's a spiritual temple. You know, it's, he did not what choose the, the place doesn't matter, it's the people that matter. You see that? This is uh, 2 Maccabees 5 and 19. Nevertheless, Yahweh did not choose the people for the place's sake, but the place for the people's sake. So the people matter. All right. All right, because, um, that land over there, Jerusalem, is corrupted right now, man. It's wicked because our land suffered as well, just like the earth is suffering. You know, that our land, Jerusalem, is suffering. If you read the next verse, it says, And therefore that place itself was that was partaken with them of the adversity that happened to the nation. All right? It said, Did afterwards communicate and the benefits sent from Yahweh. So that land suffered as well. And now the scriptures say that, that a bastard dwells over there in that land. All right? So anything that's risen up in that land is all wickedness, man. It's corrupted. It's a vanity. The children of Israel getting risen up, meaning edified or built up spiritually, that's rising up the nation back upon this earth again. All right? By what? Tearing down the imaginations and the minds of the people. That's where you tear down the idols at, before you tear down the physical idols. All right, now it says, 1 John 2 and 18, Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard, the Antichrist shall come, meaning that adversary to the truth shall come. All right, and now who did I start with? All these nations, you know, the statue of Nebuchadnezzar, you know, but um, the complete, pure adversary to... to um, to righteousness is Esau, the so-called white man, right? Uh, the brother of Jacob that later took over the Caucasus Mountains and Petra. You know, they dwelt in Petra, later taken over by the Nabataeans. You know, they had a little civil war going on on that border. But that area was called Petra, the caves, the desert lands. Those, that's where Esau, the so-called white man, dwelt, all right? And they were eating lice and blood and all kind of crazy shit, doing wicked, wicked shit, man. Now, those same, same people have begun to rule the world. They just shaved and groomed. So all the nations are fornicators and all the nations are uncircumcised, right? But the thing is, actually, I'm going to get that first. Uh, this is Jeremiah 9 and 25. It says, Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will punish all them that are circumcised with the uncircumcised. So the nation of Israel represents that circumcised. 
the uncircumcised represent these heathen nations, the congregation of the dead, meaning they're always going to be spiritually dead. Why? Because they were never given the truth. They were never given the blessing of promise or righteousness or anything or the law. Now it says, 26, Egypt and Judah and Edom, the so-called white man, and the children of Ammon and Moab, the Chinese and Japanese, you know, Egypt, them Africans, and Judah, uh, the Negro, all, all that are in the uttermost corners that dwell in the wilderness, for all these nations are uncircumcised, and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in heart. So it's not talking about a physical circumcision. It's talking about in heart, meaning mental. Because that word heart there, it says in the Hebrew, means la'ab, or your mind. So they're uncircumcised in their mind. You see that? You know, they're supposed to be cut off from this world. You, you cut this world off, man. Cut off the foreskins of your heart, of your mind. But our people have followed after the ways of who? Edom. So all these nations are wicked. All these nations are fornicators. But out of all the nations, who's the top adversary? All right, this is Hebrews 12 and 16. Lest there be any fornicator. All right, fornication uh, goes back to the uh, Greek word porneo, all right, which means adultery or physical idolatry or physical um, uh, idol worship or just being wicked, man, or blasphemy of the spirit. It says, or profane person, Profane, man, blasphemy, blasphemous person, as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Birthright. So, for one morsel of meat, that lack of faith, he sold his birthright to who? Jacob. The children, Jacob's name was later changed to Israel, and Jacob had proper skin color, I mean, he was dark skin. But today, we've all been diluted. You can't tell who's who. You know, you can tell, but still, you can't. You know what I mean? Not enough to cast physical judgment on something, you know, and plus we're not in power. So in, uh, in these times, you're supposed to use wisdom and judge according to the scripture. All right? And judge righteous judgment. Now it says, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. So who's the top adversary upon this earth or Satan? It's Esau, man, the biblical uh, Edomites. Which those are the, late, the ones that rule Greece. All right, Antipater the Edomite was the forefather of Herod the Great. Herod is spoken of in the scripture, and I'm going to get that in a minute. So that lets you know that Herod represents that dragon, which was a representation of European Union, or Europe, or Rome, as you want to call it. That's the dragon. So that dragon represents who? That, that, that mystery of iniquity, that antichrist, that, that adversary. You see that, that opponent. All right. And when was the opponent created? In the womb of Rebecca. All right, this is Genesis 25 and 21. And this was the creation of the mystery of iniquity or Satan upon this earth, the adversary upon the earth. All right. Or Antichrist. You see that? The, 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 um, and anybody that follows in that spirit of adversity, they're, they're Antichrist as well. They're anti. Messiah, they're against Yahweh All right, especially um the Pharisees and scribes, they was against Yahweh so they were definitely Antichrist. All right, so Trump is Antichrist, America's Antichrist, Obama's Antichrist, your church folk is Antichrist. Anybody listening to this lesson that's against it is Antichrist. See that? So only one that's not Antichrist in this time is the elect, 144,000 men, and one third of the men, men, women, and children that are prophesied to be saved. Right, that were given to Yahweh Shai. He said those that were given to him. That's all he cares about. All right? His jewels. They the ones that are not antichrist. They are what? They are anointed. You see it? They are anointed. All right? So um, it says, Genesis 25 and 21. And Isaac entreated Yahweh for his wife because she was barren. So Isaac, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. See that? So this was the chosen line, the chosen bloodline coming from uh, from Adam all the way to Shem. All right. Now it says, because she was barren and yet Yahweh was entreated of him and, and Rebekah, 
All right, it says, and Rebecca, his wife, conceived. It says, and the children struggled together within her, so within the womb, just like in America, in the earth being the womb. This earth represents that same womb, all right? Because what, what does the earth do? The earth um, recycles waste and bears fruit, you know, that's planted in it. The same thing with the, with, the, um, with, uh, 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 the, the, the mother's womb, it, the mother, you know, it bears fruit and it recycles waste by eating and just sitting it out, if you want to call it that. All right. So what? And the children struggle together within her, her womb. So it was prophetic of them struggling, uh, in, in existence amongst each other, man, on this earth. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of Yahweh. And Yahweh said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Right? Why? Because one was anointed, and the other one was what? Antichrist, meaning an adversary, an opponent. Right? And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. So the first one was born with Esau, and Jacob was born afterwards, grabbing his heel. So that was symbolic of, because in the old times, you know, your older brother would rule over you. But in this sense, it said, the scripture said, most High made it to where the second child was going to rule over the elder child, which would be Jacob ruling over Esau in the last days. And that's what's happening right now, man. As Jacob, as Esau falls, you know, that's how you know they're Esau, because they're in power right now. They're Illuminati. The Illuminati in America is a, is a branch of the Roman Empire. That's the dragon. It's the revamped Roman Empire, man. And America represents Nova Rome, which means New Rome, just like uh, Byzantium was called Nova Rome. America represents that today. All right, so I'm going to keep reading. It says, uh, And the elders shall serve the younger. And it says, And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, Behold, they called his name Esau, all right, meaning wasted away, because he had no pigmentation at the time. He had the same, he was born with the curse that was put on Cain. The curse of leprosy was that mark. It was a symbolic mark, all right, to point to point um Cain out. All right? What's up? Those are motherfuckers, man. Anyway, man. So uh Cain was cursed with a mark of leprosy and that same mark that was on him was uh, Esau was born with that mark alright alright man this is 2nd Ezra 6 and 7 it says, then answered I and said what shall be the parting asunder of time so when when you see the end of the world happening the end of the society breaking down you know what? what should, how do we know in that time there you know when, when we gonna know when the bondage or, the, or the, the trading of times of ages shall be for for Jacob to be ruling? You know, was it when the Lord was on the scene? No, because that was when um, Rome was in power. So when is it? What should be the parting asunder of all of that? And you know, in Persia and Medes and Babylon and Greece and Rome, what should be the separation from all of that? From that that wicked, uh, you know. Um, line of wickedness through the, out the ages. This is it. It says, Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac. We just read that. When Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, the end of the age, the end of the kingdom. The, the pure, the, the the purest wickedness you could find. The Lord digging it out like a cancer. And when he reached that core of the cancer, he's going to dig it out. All right? The so-called white man. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. All right? So Jacob is going to rule or be risen up right in the midst of the fall of this place. And that's what's happening, man. We're being risen up, not financially, not militarily. We're being risen up. Through what? Spirit. Through wisdom. Through air. Through the wind. Spirit is as the wind, man. 
He said, I will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. And that table what it represents what? Manna, the, the food, the manna coming down from heaven in the wilderness represents Yahawashah, that, that meal, that table prepared for us, which is this word. All right. So these are the things to look for. And if you're not lining up with that, you are Antichrist and you'll be an adversary to the truth or opponent to the truth in opposition to Yahweh and don't even know it by going against his disciples, going against his word, or going against him. All right, this is 1 John 2 and 18 again. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists. See, now you understand that there's many Antichrists, many adversaries to the truth. Why? Because the, the top fornicator and idolater upon the earth is the nation, the so-called uh, Caucasian nation, which is Esau. Not by color, but through their spirit. Now, um, now, but two-thirds of the children of Israel are following after that, are following after that spirit of lies. See that? He was a liar from the beginning and is the father of it. So if anybody following after that, they he, they become a child of the devil. All right? So you become what? An, an anti-Messiah, anti-truth. All right, it says, uh, verse 19, they went out from us, but they were not of us. Right? You have people today, they join this truth or be baptized into the truth, spiritually washed with the water of this word. And then they'll go back to, to groveling in the dirt. Like the scriptures say, they have the dog, the pig have returned to the to washing in the in the mire or the mud or doo-doo. See that? Or a dog returned to his vomit. Saying they don't believe that the twelve tribes sign is real, the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. They don't believe in, you know, certain doctrines, man. They start changing shit up. All right? So they, they went out from us, but they were really not of us. Like Jesse Jackass, he don't care about his people. He's not of his people. See that Martin Luther King, so on and so on. All right. But they were not of the truth. All right, it says uh, 1 John 2 and 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. You know, they were not what? Of the truth. All right. So it says, for if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, continued in the truth to the end. Because the scriptures say, he that endured to the end shall be saved. What? Saved from this World War Three? It's all prophetic, man. You know? And continue in the spirit of prophecy. Continue in praising Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Those names specifically. Giving up that vibration from your vessel, your body, and your spirit. And giving praise unto him in the midst of our enemies. In the midst of two-thirds of our people. And in the midst of his lost sheep. You know? In the eyes of the angels. Presence of the holy angels and his son Yahweh Shah and Yahweh. That's what you want to do until the end, man. You'll receive a reward for that. But if not, you'll just be living everything in vain. You know, waking people up just to scare the shit out of them. That's it. Instead of giving them the answer or the remedy or to tell them who's bringing this destruction and how to please that person that's bringing it. And that's Yahweh. All right. It says, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us, all right? So that they would it would be manifest in these times and in those times who was of Yahweh and who was of the Antichrist, meaning the adversary or the opponent, all right? Who are they, you know, who's of the devil, and, and, you know? So that that's not just one person. That's many people. It says, but, but ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things, right? You know all things pertaining to the Father, pertaining to the doctrine, pertaining to salvation, all right? And that's what you've been given an unction to know, you know? So, I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth. See, it's a war between the truth and lies, all right? That's where you get the Antichrist at. You know, um, not somebody just want to show up and destroy the government. No, that ain't it. But it is Antichrist, meaning anti-Messiah, anti Yahweh, not anti-Jesus. That's that's not the Messiah. You know, Jesus, Caesar Borgia, that white image, that's all anti-truth, man, because that was a lies. 
See that? So that's a that's against Yahweh Shah. That's against the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the Messiah, the King of Israel. You know? It says, um, 22, who is a liar, but who is a liar? <laughs> so you're a liar if you fall under this category and you become Antichrist. And this is the proof right here. Who is a liar, but he that denieth that Yahweh Shai is, is the Messiah. So he's not supposed to say Christ. It is not supposed to say Jesus. If you click on Jesus, it's going to say J uh, uh, Joshua. But if you translate Joshua, Joshua goes to what? Yahweh, not Yahshua, not Yahweh, none of that. All right? And the letter J never existed before the 1600s. So it can't be uh, Jesus. You know, that means hail Zeus. They're praising Zeus, man, Greek deities. Now it says, um, he is he is antichrist that denieth the father and the son. So if you're denying this truth, if you're denying the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and his son Yahweh and the truth about him, then you are antichrist. You are a seed of a son of the devil or a daughter of the devil. All right, and when whatever level you are, rich or poor in this society. So it says, um, verse 23, whosoever denieth the son, see, if you deny his disciples, you deny the son, Yahusha. If you deny the truth, you deny him. You're blaspheming the spirit. But if you deny Yahusha, you're denying the father, all right? Yahweh. Whoso denieth, whosoever denieth the son, the same hath not the father. But he that acknowledgeth the son hath the father also. So if you're not acknowledging his true name, Yahweh Shai, meaning he deliverer, all right? He the deliverer, then what? And that he's a black man from the tribe of Judah, and he's coming to save the Negroes, Latino, Native Americans, and the Israelites that, that look like these heathen nations, but the actual Israelites, you know, according to seed and spirit, but according to their color, they look like the so-called white man, the Chinese. But the Lord saying what? Those people, that's who he's coming to save. But even out of that, he's only coming to save a small few, a small cluster. So these these are truths that you have to know. If you don't know these things, or if you deny them, then you become antichrist, all right, by working against the truth. You know? So if not, and if, and if you fall in that category, then your father is the devil, and you become an adversary as well, antichrist.